So a good rule of thumb after a night of wrenching the next morning, it'd be nice to have a clean garage. So before you start wrenching the next day, it's a good idea to clean it and mop up all your spills. Right, Tim? Uh, yeah. Are, are you going to do that? I picked up a few things. On this episode of Team Valvoline Night School, we're tackling a big project. We're swapping in a brand new cam, and while we're in there, we're gonna replace the valve seals. Uh, today, I wanna upgrade the truck. Okay, what do you want? I want a new cam. Okay. Yeah, I like okay. that lopey life. Uh, right. No, I didn't get anything too crazy. Uh, okay. I went out and bought a comp cam. Okay. It's like a 268 cam. I don't okay. know what the numbers mean. Yeah, so that's the duration. <laughs> that's how long the valve is open. Okay. So the longer the valve is open, the more power you get, but generally only at the top end. Okay. So this is a truck, yeah. not a dragster. Right. It's not going to be at like 7,000 RPM all day long. Right. But if you get on it, so with a 268 cam, what's the lift? Uh, 494. 494. Okay, so that's good because if you go too aggressive with the lift, mm -hmm. then the problem is then you need to upgrade your valve springs. Right. Because okay. then they can compress and bottom out. But where that is, that's, that's really not that aggressive. It'll be a mild upgrade. So you'll feel it. You'll definitely hear it. Okay. Um, and you'll notice the difference for sure. So we got a lot of work ahead of us, right? Yeah, you do. I'm gonna make another list. I think we can put his lemon stuff on hold for a minute. Hey. Just do this real quick. Big list. We've got some work ahead of us with the clutch. The clutch is done. Uh, but the big job is gonna be the cam job, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, give me just a brief idea of what's in store. All right, so your cam is basically right at the bottom of your V, of your V8, or just above it. And so to get to it, we're gonna have to take apart probably about 60% of your engine. That is terrifying and also exciting. What we gotta do on the engine side, we gotta take off valve covers, take off the water pump, take off the intake manifold, take off the timing cover, and everything that's bolted to all of those things just needs to come off and get out of the way. So everything on top, everything in front? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. And then to get the cam, get the old cam out and get the new cam in, we're gonna have to take, take out the radiator. So we're gonna drain that. And then we're actually gonna have to take off your grill all the way so that we can get in and out from the front of the engine. Okay, all so right. So that is gonna be a lot of work. Right. We gotta drain everything. And then we gotta start taking stuff apart and get stuff out of the way so that we can get this job done. Okay. So before you start working on pretty much anything in the engine bay, particularly anything electrical, it's a good idea to disconnect the hot battery cable uh, so that now everything will be electrically dead. We don't have to worry when we pull the alternator that we could short uh, to any of the live terminals to anything else. So we'll just get this disconnected and then we know that the car is electrically dead. And when we put this back in, we're just gonna scrub this and knock off some of that corrosion. Ooh, look at you, knowing what you're talking about. <laughs> they grow up so fast. So we've got the radiator out. Uh, I don't think we need to remove the grill yet because this is a big truck and there's space where we're gonna get the, the old cam out, the new cam in. We, we will find out when we get there. Uh, but for now, we're moving along. Alternator's off, fan's off, and now I'm gonna take the water pump off. It took some time, but it was relatively easy work breaking down the engine. You just take your time, unbolt everything that needs to be unbolted, make sure it's out of the way, put it where you can remember it, and where you can get at the bolts when it's time to reinstall it all. But with the engine broken down a bit, we could now finally attack that go. older cam, get it out of there, and prep everything for the newer one. Ah, well, Tim is busy doing stuff with tools. I'm checking out some goodies here. I bought this cam kit system from Cop Cams. Let's see what's inside. Paper, I don't need that. These are new valve seals, and I am very excited about these because it should stop blowing some smoke out the side of the exhaust. There are new lifters, hydraulic lifters. These are nice and heavy. Weight equals good. And this is a cam. This is the new cam. Oh, it's so nice and heavy. It's so nice and heavy. Um, it 
just turned into like Aaron Neville. It's so nice and have her. It's, it's nothing crazy. I'm not gonna be sitting there nearly stalling at every stoplight. While we're doing the cams, one of the big jobs I really wanted to get done was the valve seals. This involved a fair amount of work as you need to get all of the valve springs off. To do this, you need to compress them one at a time. Before you do that, you have to have something in place to make sure the valves won't fall down into the depths of the engine. This is a little trick involving a piece of rope that gets inserted through the plug wire hole and keeps the valves up after you remove the spring, which normally holds it all in place. Each valve spring was tricky and annoying, and the best way to get it off was to hit it with a hammer. Oh, that feels good. That is a job done, and this is a part of an engine that I was honestly intimidated to work on. That is the last new valve seal put in, and it was kind of crazy because a lot of these springs had no valve seals at all. So this fixes a big problem. Uh, there should be a lot less smoke coming out of the engine. And I did something. Work glove high five. Yes. So that's a job well done, I think. At least it's done. It's, it's done. It's a job done. It's done. So this is our new cam. It's time to put it in. Um, all we're gonna have to do is coat each of these lobes with assembly lube, which is this thick kind of honey-like stuff. Once we get that all covered up, then it's just a matter of sliding it in and balancing it. They do actually make a tool for this that bolts right onto the end right here that's like a nice little handle. We don't have that tool, so we're using a bolt. And um, that shouldn't be a problem. There's no way that that could be a problem. There we go. I got the new timing gear on the cam, new timing gear on the crank, and each one of these has a little dot. See that dot right there and this dot right there? And so what you wanna do is rotate them around till the two dots are pointed at each other, and then you can take your new timing chain, and then you actually have to slide one of these gears off, hook it up, line it up, and then once that's in place, we'll go in and we'll make sure with high precision that they're lined up. It's called degreeing a cam, and we'll get to that in a second. All right, read this. We need to degree the cam. I know you handed me that paper. Yeah. And I recognized the words on it. Yeah. But I didn't recognize the order in which the paragraphs were formed. I'll be honest. That okay. That seems very confusing. You don't get it. Degreeing a cam. Okay. Degreeing a cam is a procedure to make sure that your crankshaft and your cam are exactly lined up exactly the way you want to. The deal is there's a dot on the crank, on the crank gear, and there's a dot on the camshaft gear, okay. and you line up those dots and everything's lined up. So really degreeing a cam, like if we were in a super big hurry or something, we could just slap it together. Like if you, if you didn't have the tools, didn't have the time, didn't have the brain cells, you could just slap it in there and be good. What we're gonna do, we line them up and then we're gonna rotate the engine around okay. and then we're gonna measure when the intake lifter in the number one cylinder goes up and down. We'll measure when it goes up past 50 thou, past 50 thou the other way, and we measure those on the degree wheel right here. And what we'll do is then we mark the middle between those two. That is the intake center line. Okay. Okay, and so then we know the intake center line relative to top dead center right. on the engine when the piston's all the way up on number one. Right. And then we measure the difference of that in degrees. Okay. Which will all make sense on the degree wheel here. All right, hold up. So before some guy on the internet tears this apart, I'll admit up front that degree wheel is in the wrong spot. It's on the cam here, but really it should be down on the crankshaft. So if you buy a degree wheel or you print one out like we did, it's not supposed to go on the cam, it's supposed to go down on the crankshaft. So the way we did it is wrong, but it actually doesn't make a difference because of how we did the math. We calculated the center line of the intake lobe, and then we calculated that relative to top dead center. And so when we did the math, the numbers that we got were about double what it should be on the cam cart. Well, we took those numbers and we divided them by two, and that's how we did the math, and it all kind of works out. So 
In this case, you should kind of do as we say and not as we did, because what we did is not really the right way to do it. It will still work in the end. With the cam successfully installed and it sort of successfully degreed, we think, it's time to put everything back together. That basically means you are now doing the reverse of disassemble in terms of installation. So for this, we're gonna use new gaskets at every chance we can, and we're gonna take our time to bolt everything up and make sure everything is back where it's supposed to be. And then after that, there's a fun procedure for breaking in the new cam. So anytime you're doing major engine work, you're gonna need to do an oil change. But before you get there, you have to do a break-in oil change and for that you need break-in oil and we have some of that this is from our friends at valvoline and this is a lot of it which is fun but we need about five quarts for this truck and the the purpose of this is that when you have a brand new cam in the engine it has to wear correctly to basically mate itself to the parts that it's going to be rubbing on for the extent of its life. And to do that, you still need oil, but you need oil that has a high zinc content because that zinc content allows it to wear the appropriate amount. It's all sciency, and Tim explained it to me once and I get the gist of most of it. We're gonna put this oil in the truck and then run the truck for a bit and then drain it out and pull any little bits of metal out along with it and have a nicely lubricated and broken in cam. To break in a new cam, what you do once you've got the engine fired up is you vary the speed of the engine from between 2000 and 3000 RPM and you do this for 20 to 30 minutes straight. Now, we have another task going on with the truck at the moment where Tim is getting ready to fab up a new exhaust system, so the engine currently is wearing just headers. I apologize to Tim's neighbors for what we're about to do. Choke it. Yeah, right about there. So, so far we've been fixing the truck mm -hmm. and now we've made it more awesome. Yeah. Um, that cam, the break-in part was fun. Yeah. The break-in part was a lot of fun. I have never flown a World War II fighter plane, but I kind of have an idea of what it might have sounded like. Yeah. I feel bad for your neighbors though that the break-in procedure requires 20 minutes or so of time, 30 minutes. 20 minutes of straight open headers is probably... Between 2,000 and 3,000 RPM the yep. whole time. The whole time. Um, I was in there checking my phone, I had earplugs in, and, the, and I, you know, I'd glance at you I'd, to make sure it was still okay, everything was still going good in the front. Uh, the tent came up a little bit, but kind of just sat at a level we were comfortable. And uh, we broke in the cam, and I can't wait to then break in the tires <laughs> after to break in the clutch with my new Lopi idol. There you go. That is one sweet way to upgrade. And, and it's a fun way to upgrade the truck, but it is not a way I would necessarily recommend in a weekend when you are trying to do other things. No. Um, if we were just doing that, yeah. it would have been fine. Pretty for much, For the most yeah. part. Yeah. But adding in the clutch and um, the exhaust that we're going to do, and uh, the, the, well, you have to do the valve seals anyway. So yeah. that was going to happen. That wasn't the worst part. But we bit off a we bit off a lot with that one. Yeah. But we did it. Yeah. So this was a very busy episode of Team Valvoline Night School. But again, I I learned a lot. You yeah. showed me a lot, and the truck is a lot better. Yeah. Good round of improvements. Just so you know, when you're renting on a vehicle you should be safe and smart because it's easy to get over your head and into a dangerous situation. Yeah, so whenever I'm under the truck or if there's anything moving, sparks flying, any, anything like that, safety glasses are a must. These are legit safety glasses that I have on. And for Jeff... I wear gloves because I'm a baby. Yeah. Also, even though this isn't your day job so I can't call you a professional, you've been doing this a very long time so he knows how to not be an idiot under there and you should do the same. Smell this. <laughs> 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 <laughs>